everybody. It's Jason Snell. I edit a lot of podcasts. The way I edit podcasts most often is using Ferrite Recording Studio on my iPad using the Apple Pencil. Now, there are a lot of different ways to edit podcasts, and I want to show you all of them eventually. But in this video, what I'm going to do is show you how I'm using the Apple Pencil with Ferrite to edit the incomparable. So the first thing I'm going to do is import tracks that I've already placed in the Ferrite library. So I'm going to drag those over and put them in the project. This import window slides up when you tap the import button at the bottom right corner of the screen. Now I'm going to line up my tracks. They're already lined up ideally to be synced together, so I just need to all start at the same time. Now if we zoom out a little bit, I'm going to strip silence. This is a technique I use. You can see I'm going to tap the strip silence button there. It removes areas of the track where there's no sound. And this means that I'm going to actually be editing a project with a whole bunch of individual blocks. That increases the visibility of when there's noise on the track and lets me judge whether it's stray noise or somebody's talking. It makes it very easy to see when multiple people are talking at once or when anybody's interrupting or interjecting in a way that uh, I need to take care of or at least look at when I'm editing. And now you can see the final result. Here's a quick look at what my strip silence defaults are. A 6% threshold, fading at zero. I don't like fades in and out on editing dialogue because it sounds weird. And one second of minimum silence. So after a second below the 6% threshold, it cuts the track and leaves a gap. All right, let's zoom in on the beginning of this project. And you can already see some stray microphone noises there from my panelists while I'm reading the introduction. It's very easy with a pencil to swipe from right to left. Now, this isn't a default setting. You have to set it in the gestures section of the settings. It's called Quick Delete. And as you'll see in the rest of this video, I use that pencil swipe from right to left all the time to very quickly remove stuff that doesn't belong in the project. Welcome back, everybody, to The Incomparable. I'm your host, Jason Snell. We continue our walk through many, 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 many TV shows that uh, that aired in late 2019 that we... Uh... Here's a cleanup bit. I'm going to swipe up with my pencil and then to the left, and I've removed many, a portion many TV shows of the audio that aired in. And now I'm going to tap and select everything and drag it back to close the gap to make it sound as if I never made a mistake many many tv shows that aired in late 2019 that we uh, are enjoying talking about i'm going to make another edit here i'm previewing it we are enjoying that we are enjoying that's not perfect but it's okay and you can see my strategy here is just i continue playing and i'm auditioning the track as i go and finding things both by listening and by seeing gaps or weird interjection spaces in the waveform, I can actually have an idea that it might be something I need to change. All right, now I'm going to pinch back out here and show you how to select things in Ferrite. A double tap selects everything forward in a single track, which is bad if you want to keep everything together. So you triple tap to select all the tracks forward, and I'm going to use that gesture all the time while I'm editing to say how about Amazon in December and we're going to talk again here I'm going to do some cleanup I'm dragging out with the pencil to the left that deletes that section in and then December, I'm pushing them back together gonna... now you may notice that I'm tapping with two fingers to play and pause that's a shortcut that is very useful in ferrite and it's not on by default you need to go to the gesture setting and turn play pause for two finger tap on hello closed up that gap between my introduction and the response from Aline. Now I'm going to continue auditioning, see if I can find other things I need to clean up. And you can see the blocks left by Strip Silence give me a visual cue of when there are sound problems that I may need to address. Okay, of a, uh, of a podcast that's not called The Complicated Profession because that is a totally different <laughs> Okay, so here I've misstated the name of Chip's podcast, and then later I've gone back very cleverly and said it as if I said it all along. 
of a legitimate salvage uh, on of a legitimate. So what I can do here is I can actually trim out everything between those two points, slide them together, and hear what I've got. Team structure. structure. Okay. Of of a legitimate. Right, there's a duplicated word there, so I don't need the word from both sides. I delete it and then slide them together. Okay. Of a legitimate sound. Much better. I'm going to trim this, get it a little bit closer. Does that sound even better? Okay. Of a legitimate yep. salvage uh, on the incomparable. And again, this is some minor kind of um, uh, cleanup. It's optional. I, when I see it and it jumps out at me as an easy fix, I will make those changes. The Expanse episode by episode. Chip, it's part of our article adjective noun. We've, but I've also we've decided forward in, time. in this case that I'm going to take out this interjection from Moises altogether um, and jump straight to the next bit that I'm saying. And this is purely so editorial. I decided we, that I didn't like that interjection and I preferred pulled, the intro to continue rolling on. Um, some of the changes are for aesthetic reasons of I want this to sound episode, better and some of them are editorial. Chip forward in time. Let me show you what I'm doing here. I'm actually replacing the last part of what I said earlier on by dragging my file right over it. This is a feature that you can turn on in Ferrite. And I'm actually sliding it to match exactly sort of where I want to overlap and replace what's already there. And when I find that spot with natural kind of timing, I drop it and the edit is automatically made. This is a feature you enable by going to the editing settings and choosing crop for overlapping audio. Time to talk about the entirety of season four, even though a legit uh, episode four. Four, yeah. Here I interrupted Chip, glad, and Chip interrupted glad to me, be here, and boss. the timing was just off. And one of the goals of doing these edits is to make us seem almost psychically linked, telepathic, that we know we complete uh, each other's four, sentences, four. and there are never Hi, in interruptions at glad any point. Four. Hi, Chip. Glad to be here, Boss Ming. <laughs> That's much better. It's also here. Hello. Oh, yeah, Boss Ming, your faction does not speak for the belt. That There's my intro for Moises. That looks good. And again, I'm looking and I'm seeing these gaps and thinking, no. what is that? Why and Did I pause there? I grew up watching Star up? Trek, so I do a lot of pausing while I talk because of William Shatner. But sometimes it'll be a duplicate thought, a, an um, an uh, something like that, that is very easy very to much. take out. Um... Like there. Low binge, trademark. The uh, it's good to have him back though, right? Like clean up. It, it, Aline said it earlier. Clean up. Spot some things up there uh, in the waveform. Let's check uh, it out. It it uh, it it's it yeah, it's worth a trim. So there I go. I'm going to trim this back. Out of it, but. Um, trying to figure out where exactly I should make the edits, and then ideally I can put them together. And I'm gonna actually grab the handle there on the right side and widen it. Money's worth out of it, but it seemed like a mistake. Pretty good, moving it on. Junk, clean it up. Big gap there. That's interesting. Just a big pause. Good, if not better than ever, I thought. Yeah, it was. So what happens so a lot is people need a minute, and really I agree, am definitely but... one of those people. Need a minute to kind of warm up to what you want to say. You, We don't all talk like scripted people. I thought. Yeah. And, and in this so case, Aline gets to her point. I don't know that I agreed But with. not right away. May may not and then she misstates later, actors it, and characters. characters. And I can just really, clean this all up. I keep her first really... little interjection. And then I'm going to drop into right when she starts making her core it, point. The and the rest are... of it, I'm going to just take out. And this way, it sounds like Aline is jumping straight in with her first point. I thought. Yeah. The actors and that's are cleaner. really, I think, settling into their characters. Moving on. And I was blown away by a lot of the act with kind of the crew of the, mm. the Rosinante trim versus my little noise dealing there. with Belters. Just to leave the room um, noise out throughout the se throughout the season was like she's so good and it's so subtle and she's a little done bit of stray pausing from a lean that i can crop out throughout since i spotted it and the heard it was like she's so good and it's so subtle stray noise and she's removal. done it the entire tighten that time. up so we're Great. jumping Officer right in there's no delay impunity oh. i make a little mouth noise here and it's that big pop and so i actually am zooming in to get rid of that pop 
just to make it sound a little bit better. Some people are really triggered by mouth noises. That doesn't bother impunity. me, but it oh, bugs a lot yes. of people. But she does. Everybody gets to swear with impunity. It's true. <laughs> but she's there got a lot of things you will probably have to bleep later in this episode that yeah. I will bring up. Oh, it's just you're making more work for me, but okay. If it has I'll, to happen. I'll, I'll concentrate I'll it all. Take this interjection out completely. It happens from time to time. I want that t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, the profanity horn is just the spoiler horn, and then there's like a, a... So another example of kind of an editorial decision to just take a part of the conversation that didn't work for me, and I feel like derails the main conversation, and slide them back together. Got a lot of it. Anyway, this is based on the novel... Ontario, Canada. The uh, the good old GTA. So here Moises is making a joke about Toronto, and Chip and I are making a Doctor Who joke, and I've just decided that that's too many jokes at the same time, and I want to make it more like Chip and I are on the exact same page about quarries. Quarry filmmaking. I just felt like I was at home. Yeah, it's a classic Doctor Who move. That has Done. Been moved over. That Star Trek Moving on. It, and, uh, the Expanse now does it, the quarry. Every alien planet is a quarry. Um... You know, the, there's it, there's stuff they pull from things that are an got an overlap here where Moises gets started while I'm trailing off and honestly not saying anything of value. And so I'm just going to end my statement and he jumps in. Job of adapting it. There's there's stuff they trim up what he says, stick them together. There's stuff they and it's like we're telepathic. Adapting it. There's stuff they pull from things that are not in the book, but are in the series. Yes. And are canonical and um, make it. It's not pandering. And that's just stray noise. Take it out. That's stray noise. Take it out. If they had gone really, really strict, would have enjoyed it more. Yeah. I told so a little interjection I can leave in, a little extra noise. And I so much of my editing task is like this, really where I'm just going left to right, looking for weird things in the waveform that might be worth and removing just finished season four. closing up some of chips no closer to decide i've got continuity pauses there yet. and, and moving on just finished to deciding i've got this <laughs> I've, I've got continuity brain old old comic book fan has to have everything in a certain bid. well i think the book is recognizably cibola burn but the, the fact is that cibola He did. Well, I think the book is recognizably Cibola Byrne, but mm -hmm. and really not a lot of Avicarala, but but especially not a lot of Bobby. And uh, we can get to Bobby in a minute, but because basically they adapted it. Um, and I'm not, I don't believe those characters are actually even in Cibola Byrne. I think they don't mm -hmm. appear until the fifth. Book. Little cleanup yeah, of yep. the so, end of that uh, audio. Clean up the beginning of that. Exactly. Delete an extra it, it noise like there, scrap, which, is, uh, which I think is good. And I think I, I make that that maybe went on a little too some of the stuff that that maybe went on a little too long not like this book it is no i don't like it um it is, okay, removing a little prelude like um, and just like getting straight book. to the point no, I don't like sounds it. better um, it again is, like we're telepathic i would consider skipping it make a little dialogue trim always preview after you make a change like that, you've got to listen to it because it may sound terrible or it may sound surprisingly good. See, that's a collision. There's three people talking at once, and I'm just going to take myself out as if I was never there. Dance around, not just... The, the book itself is not. And then Moises, I'm actually going to slide ahead. I'm zooming in for a little more detail. Aline is making a point here. Yeah, the the book itself is not. And she kind of trails off. Not my favorite. I can close the gap, overlay that. Now she's making one point. The book itself is not my favorite. Now that sounds like she's able to make her complete point uninterrupted and straightforward. And then I bring Moises back. Not my I mean, I, I wrote, and we get that telepathy again. Because I wanted to dance around everybody knows what everybody's saying. Not my favorite. I mean, I, I, wrote, I wrote my notes. And in fact, I can make it even more straightforward. I wrote my notes very carefully. All right, let's bring in the music and intro. I'm going to add a new track here and tap on import. 
I get the little slider, and I'm going to go to my library here and bring in sci-fi theme, which is the incomparable theme. And now I'm going to add something called a volume automation. And this allows me to adjust the volume of a track as we play it. I'm going to slide my intro back a little bit. And I'm going to tap and make these little dots. And the little dots let you change the volume. I prefer this straight line approach, but if you prefer Bezier curves, you can set it to that too in the automation settings. So now that audio fades out. The music fades out as I start to talk. I'm going to bring in the incomparable announcer, which is Mr. Plain Talk Fred. The music is a little loud, so I'm going to actually play the theme song not 100% to start, and then fade it out further when I start to talk. Welcome back, everybody, to The Incomparable. I'm your host, Jason Snell. We continue our work. That's it for this time. Stay tuned to SixColors.com for much more about podcasting, Apple, and a whole bunch of other stuff.